Nigeria's withdrawal from the signing of the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement over the weekend appears to be eliciting divergent views. Now, this development is now being assessed in different quarters with a look at the benefits and disadvantages it poses to the age-long call for Africa's integration. Our business correspondent, Temple Ashaju, reports. The idea of the continental free trade area dates back to 2012 with the view to realizing the African Union Agenda 2063 for an integrated, prosperous and peaceful Africa. The agreement seeks to establish rules-based trade governance against unfair trade practices in order to stimulate an estimated 8.18% increase in Nigeria's total exports. After years of consultations, actual negotiations for the CFTA was launched at the African Union Johannesburg Summit in 2015, and Nigerian-born Ambassador Chiedu Osakwe subsequently became the chairman for the negotiating forum. It's a major advantage. We tend to forget it. We should not. Nigeria is a market and focus. For most economies in the world, those outside Africa and those within Africa. But having a market scale is not enough. At the Federal Executive Council meeting last week, not only was the deal approved, but cabinet members resolved to have the CFTA headquartered in Nigeria. You know, next week in uh, Kigali in Rwanda uh, will be a summit meeting of uh, African heads of state to, um, to sign up to this uh, continental free trade uh, area. Three days later, President Muhammadu Buhari cancelled his attendance at the meeting on the grounds that domestic consultative processes are yet to be concluded with necessary public and organized private sectors. There is the need for proper and adequate consultations with critical stakeholders to mitigate the imminent onslaught ahead of the implementation phase. In an emailed reaction to Channel's television on Monday, Ambassador Osakwe says, and I quote, with the scale and diversity of the Nigerian economy, it will be understood that in situations such as the current one, haste may be made slowly, diligently, and comprehensively. There is appreciation on the part of members of AU that Nigeria led the continent in the negotiations to this stage. End of quote. As other countries put pen to paper on their agreements without Nigeria, where this leaves the nation becomes a subject of debate. Temple Ashaju, Channels Television News. To discuss the issues surrounding the withdrawal of the CFTA agreement, I'm now being joined on the News at 10 by an economist, Tilewa Adebajo. Thanks a lot for joining us on the News at 10. Good evening, Adjo. Sometimes the COVID, Nigeria is criticized sometimes for the way we enter and exit um, certain agreements. Is that what's happening here, or do you would support this withdrawal? Um, not at all. I think what is happening here is, uh, uh, for me, a very catastrophic mistake on our path in terms of the way we've handled this whole process. Um, we are the largest economy in Africa, and when something like this is happening, we have to take the leadership role. As you've seen from your documentary, this was an agreement that went through the Federal Executive Council process. Um, what does this say about the Federal Executive Council? Is it that there's no organization? So it doesn't even reflect the current administration in good light not to talk about the international diplomacy that we've lost. There are other heads of states waiting for us in Kigali, um, and these sort of negotiations take so many man hours. Is it the way we've, well, we've withdrawn that there's, there you have a problem with, or the fact that you know, the proposals within that agreement will not favor us? Which one is it? Well, when you say the proposals will not favor us, our Federal Executive Council has already approved it. So um, it's, not, it's, it's both in the sense that we're going to a stage of this agreement whereby we're sending a memorandum that will start negotiations for integration. It, we're not signing off anything yet. But our legal people have reviewed it. The Minister for Trade and Investment has been meeting with other ministers over the last one year to harmonize most of this information. And if... From what I understand, we, are not, we have not said we're not signing this agreement. What we've just said is that we're withdrawing. Um, we also said we wanted to 
um, be the secretariat for this whole free trade agreement issue. So if we're not there, where they're signing the agreement, probably some other country now has gotten that lead. So I think it's important that Nigeria shows leadership because the numbers, Ijoma, on this are staggering. Right now, intra-Africa trade is only 170 billion. The total value of trade within Africa is about 1.7 trillion. If we get into this agreement, you are going to create a trading zone worth about $3.5 trillion uh, with a population of about 1.2 billion, which is highly competitive with that of the European Union. Yeah, well, that might be so. But others who have also studied the agreement have said that there are um, certain issues with it, for instance, um, in terms of trade and what, what other countries can bring in. Some other countries might, are, are better prepared in terms of manufacturing. They've got their electricity rights and the infrastructure to bring in, and we don't. So we'll probably be at a disadvantage. There's that particular argument as well. It's not just the positive aspect, but there are um, some negative aspects of it for us as a country, or don't you think so? Yes, but our Federal Executive Council has approved it. So what I'm trying to explain to you is the fact that we're already part of ECOWAS. So, so, what, has you see, so what I'm trying to say is that what this is all about is that in Africa you have key trading blocks. Africa, ECOWAS is one of them which we belong to. There's the Maghreb side, there's SADC, and there's the East Africa and Central Africa trading blocks. All we're trying to do is to put together a framework to integrate all these things. So the argument about what are we talking about, it's the, the whole signing is to start the whole process of negotiation. But I think the positive that I can take from this is the fact that we have said that we're, we haven't, we're not withdrawing from that agreement, but we want to have a wider consultation. So how, how far-reaching should the consultations be? And then how specific should the inclusion be? Because you see there, we, oh, we need to consult more people who... And um, at what point do well, we, we well, think, think this is a good or bad deal for us? I don't think it's a bad deal for us. And I think that if you take a look at the realities of, of the modern world and the way we're going in terms of how trading blocks dominate uh, trade, um, if we as Africans continue to behave as export enclaves from the colonial side and we don't break that cycle, then it's going to be very difficult for us to work. The, Mor the king of Morocco actually came to Nigeria to try to convince us to, to get Morocco to join ECOWAS because he sees value in intra-African trade. And it's a market that is worth $3.5 trillion. Um, dollars. So if we're going to maintain and sustain our lead as the leading economy in Africa, we have the population of 180 million. So basically, all the African countries are going to want to trade with us because we're going to be the nucleus of that arrangement. People want us to open our markets to them and the same thing to us too. So there's a mutual benefit within the trade agreement. We're already doing it with ECOWAS. You can travel to Senegal, you can travel to Mali, you can travel to Ghana without a passport. So we're just trying to do this on a continental scale. So and this is just the first step of this whole process. So finally now, diplomatically, um how does it make us look when we get ourselves into this sort of situation where we're so close to something we pull out? I know earlier you had said that it doesn't, it's not a good one, but how do, we, how do we handle this now diplomatically if we were trying to come back to the table to look at this again, if, if it does happen? Well, it's just a question of damage control, and um, we'll just have to try to save face uh, and try to get back into the negotiation table. But what you'll find out is the fact that some people, other leaders would have emerged because this meeting is going to go on and somebody going, else is going to come up and take the leadership position, probably South Africa or Egypt or Morocco, will now go in there, take the leadership position, and by the time we go back, uh, we'll probably be playing, playing second fiddle. Mm. And in terms of um, integrating trade on the continent, I know that this is a discussion that has been happening for years. Um, are we saying that we're out in terms of e-trade and integration at this point? No, I don't think they've said, I think clearly, I think that, I think like I said, that's the positive from this. We haven't pulled out of that agreement. We're just waiting to consult more before we sign the agreement. <laughs> All right, thank you so very much. And economist Mr. Tiliwa Adibaju for sharing your thoughts on the news at 10 tonight. Thank you very much. And when the news at 10 returns, World Bank begins preparations for about half a billion dollar electricity distribution improvement project in Nigeria. That's on business. Be serious.